Hello Booktube, um, today I'm going to be giving you my review of Enchanted Pilgrimage by Tiffany Simak. I read this as a part of a read-along which Sean D. Sandfast has organised where each month we read a different uh, Simak novel. Uh, last month was the first month of the read-along and we read City and this month it's the Enchanted, Enchanted Pilgrimage. Um, the novel is set in a alternate 1975 where there has been no Renaissance, Reformation or Enlightenment and the Catholic Church reigns supreme. There is also a world where magic is real and creatures from folklore exist like um, gnomes, uh, goblins, harpies, hellhounds and all sorts of other creatures exist and people know about them. Uh, the story follows a scholar at Wasling University called uh, Mark Cornwall, who, whilst he's in the library of the university, he uncovers a hidden manuscript in a book written by an ancient traveller about an area called the Wasteland, which is where uh, the sort of creatures from folklore live, and there was, many centuries before the book is set, um, a war between humans and these creatures. And Humans have not been there, been in this area for thousands, hundreds of years, if not thousands of years, and so the knowledge of it is sort of hazy, and much of it is regarded as legend. And one particular legend about the area is there are a group of people living there called the Old Ones, who, who Mark Cornwall thinks has a great deal of knowledge about the past, and so he wants to go and seek them out, and so he go, he begins on his journey. Um, at the same time, he has been pursued by an agent of the Inquisition called Lawrence Beckett and his men, who um, have been informed by a monk who witnessed um, witnessed Cornwall find the manuscript, and then went along and told uh, Beckett about it. Um, Cornwall is warned about this by a gob by a rafter goblin called Oliver, uh, who this um, sort of enables Mark to escape. Um, without detection, and he begins on his sort of on his journey, his pilgrimage into the wastelands to find out what's there and about the old ones. Uh, on the way, he sort of uh, he uh, acquires a sort of gang of fellow travellers. One of uh, a couple of um, <coughs> Oliver is one of them. There's also a uh, gnome called Snively. Snively, um, and then there are two creatures who live. Uh, one is uh, called Gib, who is a marshman, and there is also a uh, Hal of the Hollow Tree. And these are not human; they're furry creatures who I don't know if you. Uh, there's not much description of them in the book, or physically of them in the book. And so I can't quite tell if they're meant to be a creature from folklore, or they're simply, or they're, they're a race that Clifford Simak Clifford um, made up. But anyway, they join um, in helping Mark, and they're also doing by a girl called Mary, um, who seems to have come from the wasteland as a very young child. And so you follow them on their journey across the wasteland into sort of even further beyond that. And they run into all sorts of things, like they run into a witch, an ogre. Uh, they deal with, they come up against something called the Chaos Beast, which is clearly an alien of some sort. And then they find the old ones who are not exactly as Mark expected them to be. Uh, but then, after that, they uncover something uh, even more. Mark does, in fact, find uh, the truth about them. Uh, about the past and about the world, and um, and so it's just really, it's it's really I really enjoyed this book. Um, as ever, Simak's ability to describe landscape is brilliant. Um, the dialogue when I first read it was a bit um, bit of a bit was a bit uh, I wouldn't say shocked me, but was a bit. Um, of a surprise, shall I say, because it was very formal. It was like he was writing, um, trying to write something similar to Elizabethan, and that was a bit. I'd say it was a bit of a surprise when I first read it, but 
once you get into the book, you just get used to it. So it has a rhythm and sound as you uh, read the characters talk. Um, there's a lot of uh, dialogue in this book, a lot of conversations as the characters are travelling. There is action in here, but it doesn't last for very long, and it's uh, it's over. Very, as I say, it doesn't last for very long. It's very quick. Be done. Um, it seems that I don't. From this book, it seems that Simak could write action, but couldn't do it for very long, or that action wasn't something that Simak seemed to be overly concerned with. Which, fair enough. Uh, but that said, the action scenes in here I enjoyed, even though they were short. And you certainly got the uh, story. It uh, certainly the story kept moving on throughout it. Um, <coughs> the characters I were, were very well developed, particularly the non-human characters. Um, Mark Cornwall, who is the main human in it, uh, was he he was a little less well drawn. He seemed a bit more of a sort of stock character. Um, than anything else, but nevertheless, he was in, he was a, somebody you could root for. Um, the villain Lawrence Beckett seemed a bit, uh, I've got to say, seemed a bit of an afterthought in some ways. He was built up at the beginning of the story because he, because the monk who goes to see him gets killed um, after meeting Beckett, and it's and it's assumed and, and it, it it sort of not openly said, but you sort of assume that Becky killed him. But then Beckett only occasionally appears in the in the story after that. And it's not like, um, for example, I'm currently reading through, we're reading the James Bond novels, and the villains there, so even when they're not on the, not on the page physically as, as characters uh, interacting with Bond, they're there sort of uh, sort of overshadowing everything and um, in the uh, Enchanted Pilgrimage Becky wasn't there way when he wasn't there if you understand what I mean he, he, he would appear, occasionally appear, appear every so often and there'd be an occasional mention of him but he was, he didn't see, he, he didn't feel like he was sort of um, overshadowing Mark Cornwall and his band um, even when it was it, it, I think it's because of the way that Simak wrote the book the, as I say I enjoy this book and the, the journey and their sort of fights was, the, I think actually seems were good but there didn't seem a great deal of menace from Beckett or in some cases from the sort of creatures that went up against um, what, for example, the Hellhounds who appear in the book are well described, and what they do to um, Lawrence Beckett when they get hold of him is well described and actually quite brutal. They don't feel when when you when you know that the, the, because there's a scene afterwards where the the Hellhounds are sort of um, surrounding uh, Cornwall and his band. You don't really feel like Cornwall and his band are in that much danger. Uh, this sort of contrasts with when the uh, when the when Cornwall and his band come up against the um, the old ones later on, where there is a certain, where you do get a real threat, sense of threat from them, and also um, uh, part, um, Cornwall and his band are come under attack from harpies, and that again. You get a real sense of threat that the harpies could kill them, but things like the Hellhound, things like Beckett himself, don't seem to sort of be the big threat that they're, they're played out to be. From the way from the way I read it myself, it might be because I didn't, it might be because I wasn't I haven't quite got into Clifford Simak's style yet, so it could be that. Um, but as I say, overall, I enjoyed the book. It's I enjoyed. Simax writing, particularly his description of landscapes, and I'm looking forward to reading more Simac over the course of this year. Um, I, I, will, I can't remember what Sean's gonna have has got down as the thing to read next. Um, I'll, what I'll do is I'll leave a link to Sean's video about the read along um, because he did one recently, actually setting out what the um, <coughs> what the plan for each month is, 
Uh, I did watch it, I just can't remember the book name. So I'll put that in the link in the description, and with that I will say goodbye booktube, and I will see you again.